This is where the fun begins. Welcome, welcome. This is your host, Alora Baga, and thank you for hopping on CapChat here at OG Star Wars channel. Whoops, sorry. And I tell my mic, sorry. Wow, that's funny. And I am so happy to be with you here this Thursday morning, Thursday morning for me, wherever you're at. I hope your day began well. So let's see who's coming into the chat. Looks like I have a full chat here. Um, very, very nice. You guys are amazing. And I don't know if any of you guys are, I'm going to switch my mic or do something with this mic here. Um, I don't know. There we go. I don't know if any of you guys have been following um, the Bad Batch or at least know something about it, but the Bad Batch has sparked the topic here today. And that topic is Asajj Ventress. So we're going to be talking the lore of Asajj Ventress. What do you know about her? But before then, before we begin then, let's go ahead. Cheers to you guys. Look at my lipstick. Cheers to you guys. What's in your mug? What are you enjoying this morning? Me, some coffee with a little bit of sweetener. Black. That's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. And this time I remembered it. And if you're catching the replay, thank you so much. Everyone go press the like button. Let, um, let everybody know that we are live here. And um, yeah. So thank you guys again. And I have Mr. Toby, if you could see him, he is laying right here to the right side of me, laying on the table, just resting away. Um, so you might be seeing him on camera here soon. If he um, get into the camera space and what have you. And we're also going to be using sources like this to talk about Asajj. So there's some fun facts that we're going to be talking about both lore wise development wise all of that so let's see who's in the chat and Corey cochran good morning all well good morning to you and i have my star wars basically a new hope t-shirt on and it has the scroll in the back and um thought i would come in and my hair looks fairly decent i just threw it back when i was running around the house getting shit done but um hair is fairly decent and then you know, for those who are on Twitter, you may have seen that um, I had a confrontation with someone on there, someone that has chosen to, I would say, one of those people that comes after you, you never bother with their own Twitter, their own tweets, you just leave them alone and every chance they get, they have a, a reason to come in and attack or jump in and participate in someone, you know, um, someone talking shit to you, that kind of person. Well, you know, that that ended up being a block, and I'm happy for that. And his name is Tech Solo. So if you see him on Twitter and stuff, you know, that's what's going on. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for him. You know, he's going around thinking that he is, you know, um, protecting grown ass people on Twitter from being bullied. That's his thing. And he's using that basically to, um, to shield himself from what he's doing. Like what he's doing is right. And he's righteous kind of talk. But anyways, that's just your, your cesspool of Twitter, especially when they get mad at you because you know, you, you share the lore, you're, um, and you counter people that, um, about the lore and you share your your research and all this other stuff. 
um, that's called insecurity on their half, on their behalf. It's called insecurity. But anyways, let's go ahead and go through the chat here. The Fractured Filters here. Good morning, um, Alora and chat. Smash that like button. And I hope a soul assassin hopped on. I haven't heard from him this morning. And then Jason Fox is here. Hey, how are you doing with the hand waves? And channel member here, Melissa Lord. Hey, girl, OG Star Wars. Hello, how are you doing? And um, and how are you doing? My alarm just sounded. Must be time for coffee. Coffee chat. Yes. And Tyranazilla, hello. And yes, we're ready. We are ready. <laughs> and let's see here. Iron Inquisitor is here. Let's begin. Got my big mug ready filled with coffee. Cheers to you. Um, let's see here. Con um, was that Conrado? Conrado? Um, Javier. Why do they change adventure species to Dathomirian? I, I haven't got behind that other than... We'll talk about it concept wise, concept art wise. Okay. So we'll get into that. And an Anakin Batsy, hello there. Iron says, so weird that Ventress's final fate is now unresolved, both timelines. We never got to see what became of her after obsession. Correct. Correct. And we'll go over that as well. And then um, I do have a new channel member. Um, Fractured Filter, and I will get to that here pretty soon. But thank you so much for coming in and becoming a channel member. And let's see here. Where's the rat attack eye species after Ventress got space? Wa uh, whoa, species washed. Whoa, yeah. And we'll get into that. I mean, everybody, oh, I could tell you guys are ready for this talk. Good morning. Chief Eddie is here. Hello. And so is all around Arbiter. Hello. Red Hootwee, hello. And let's see here. Oh, I need to watch Rhino's recent review. That's only the only way I ke I kept um I kept up with the Bad Batch. Yeah, that came out this morning. I watched it before we came before we um, went live here. So um, go ahead and check that out when you guys have an opportunity. Tyrana Zilla only watched half a season one of Bad of Bad Batch. Had to stop last year because my late father's health got worse. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, let's see here. Coffee with whole milk with DHA. Eddie says, yeah, seen him around just another shill mm -hmm. and mod our mood, uh, mood cap. Hi. Let's see here. You guys are amazing. And thank you so much for becoming a channel member. Thank you for your continued support. And then again, we have five gifted Star Wars memberships being gifted. Thank you so much. I Really appreciate what you um, have donated to. Thank you, guys. And I don't know why my internet keeps going in and out today, but we do have bad weather. The weather here is a bit rainy. Last night it was storming a little bit. Let's see here. And um, I need a bigger ca um, coffee emoji. Um, that's no moon. That's his morning coffee. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we are going to get into this here, right here. So what is your favorite, what is your favorite um, thing or scene, or I wouldn't say scene, but I guess you could say our event of uh, Massage Ventress that if you read the comics, if you've seen her in Clone Wars 03 and Tyron Azilla says a guy on discord kept grasping at straws when I said that Andor doesn't follow the aesthetics of Lucas Star Wars. He was really defensive for the show. Still stands by my still stand by my point. Yeah, you'll have people, oh, that's the best ever, blah, blah, blah. And I was accused of like bullying someone for um not liking Andor. And that's not the case. I don't do that. I just share points of like how it breaks canon and you know, and then also too, um, how I've been told how slow it is and how people got became disinterested in it because of the uh, the pace. The only one that I truly, truly, and I wish she was here to contest to this, but the only one that I truly, truly um, go after, like in a sense, if you want to call it that, and it's friendly teasing because we have familiarity with each other, is Abu Nas. So um, I always tease them about Andor and I always tease them about Rogue One. I think people are just too damn sensitive 
and they take social media bullshit to heart. And um, that's why, you know, I am now a the the boogeyman for them, because now this person, uh, his followers, his friends who come in and, and um, do the same bullshit that he does um, are like, now I got to put up with her on my own, you know, so that's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. I don't understand why Filoni decided to use Ventress if he was going to change everything about her. The same applies to other characters, um, notably Quinlan Boss. All he did was look at this and he said, oh, we'll use this. And, you know, and went there. You know that he doesn't really care about honoring characters. And in fact, let's go ahead and play this here. Speaking of, um, of this guy. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves of what he does. And I've always leaned towards the, if we're going to create something, we should check and see if it existed already to the fans. Because it has way more value if we bring that in. And right. it's like, why would I just replace it with something new? So if we're going to do an admiral, if we're going to do a big military leader, um, yeah, I could create a new guy, sure. But what about Thrawn? Thrawn is great. Thrawn is a character we all know. Thrawn has a lot of credibility. So then you ask yourself, is it right to use him? And can we use him in a way that's similar to the books? Or are we using him and it's going to go completely into left field? And there have been times when we wanted to use things from the EU. And I was like, yeah, but we can't use it that way. So why? I don't want to use it and change it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to use it and make it something completely different. That's rude. And so this guy, this guy is like, I don't want to change it. That's rude. But what does he do? What does he do the best? My poor hair. What does he do the best? Let's see here. And then, yeah, we'll get to that. Bad Batch is all right. Delta Squad is where it's at. Yes, the originals is where it's at. All her stuff in Clone Wars mini uh, micro series is my favorite moments from Ventress, and also the Republic comics and and actually the multi um, multimedia project. Multimedia project. So I'm gonna get through this, and then we're um, yeah, you made it. I was wondering what was going on with you. <laughs> if you didn't catch the action on my Twitter from last night, <laughs> um, you you probably seen it. But anyways, thank you for hopping in. My mods here. Hello. Hello. Um, let me see here. Wait, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Um, I like when Anakin defeated Asajj in the fourth moon of Yavin. That was good stuff. And his scar is from Asajj Ventress, too. His scar is from massage. In fact, George Lucas was like, people are asking, how are we, how do we know, or how did Anakin get his scar? You know, so this is between episode two and three. And George is basically, yeah, the EU, EU will tell you that. So I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, because of course, you know, those who take George's quotes too, too, too seriously, I'm paraphrasing, but of my internet that is exactly um not exactly that is you know basically what he said is like it'll be shared in the books or what have have you and what was neat was it was shared in the comics the comics george lucas loves the comics that's you know if he picks up anything regarding star wars it's the comics and um and he that's where he likes to browse and read because it's quick and easy if it's really compelling story it's not it's not like doesn't go into deep details like a novel does and so and i think that's what the time he has where he could just unwind and look at the art look at the stories and stuff which i don't you know for a busy man at the time i don't blame him for you know not you know for for wanting just to you know um relax to comics and i think comics has always been his favorite thing um, let's see here. It would have been simpler if Ventress dies from her fight on Yavin 4. Um, no, I think the, her ending, and I think it was Obsession, I think it was. The comics, Obsession. Um, her 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 death there um, was, was phenomenal. 
Melissa says you should change your profile picture to Michael Myers mask. <laughs> I know, right? I am like I am like the Star Wars Michael Myers boogeyman to some people on on Twitter now. Um, Dave Redconny. Oh, I like that. Dave Redconny. It makes him sound Italian, Redconny. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of that, Dave Redconny? Dave Redconny. And let's see, Filoni is a fake EU fan. Yes, he was called out. Let's see here. Continuity is a lie. There was, there was, is the message Darth Jabroni. Darth Jabroni. <laughs> I love this. You guys. Uh, was in Delta Squad portrayed in as mindless soldiers in the Bad Batch? You know what? I can't answer that for you. Um. So I were they even in no no that was the Delta Squad in the Bad Batch you guys because that I don't know that I don't know <laughs> and proceeds to make Thrawn into a mouth that's breathing moron you got that right now we're not here just to, solely just to you know um go after Filoni for all his bullshit so let's get into this lore here as I um start scrolling down and just seeing what you guys are talking about so I'm gonna bring a, the screen up let's see here. I think this is the right one. Yes. Let's go here. So this is all from the, um, let me get my picture out of here. I want this to be, there you go. This is from the, the art of Star Wars episode one, Attack of the Clones. And it goes into concept art. And if you guys... Oh my God. Okay. So those who don't follow me on Twitter are those who are not on Twitter. Cause I know, like, I think Melissa Lord is not on Twitter. Um, but, um, I had Hidalgo <laughs> like a week and a half ago, comment on one of my tweets. Now I was doing some research about, um, what was it about? Oh, just about some things happening in TCW. You hear that car? There's this, there's this idiot. And it's like, it's sporadically nighttime, daytime and stuff. He's zooming around in his car and then revving up his engines and then sliding and, you know, and hitting his brakes and stuff. I know I live on a res. So like the, quote unquote DMV laws are very different here. But anyways, so Pablo Hidalgo commented on my post about some research I was doing about season six of the Clone Wars. And, you know, Filoni had confessed that, you know, most of um, season six wasn't finished yet. When they canceled season four when they canceled the clone wars to be aired on the um cartoon network or whatever it's called which it, whatever wherever it was being broadcast so that's when that was canceled and so then he goes on to say that they started you know finishing up um 2013 and that 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 eventually will be airing you know TCW again um and stuff like that so because because they halted halted season 6 and then picked up on it later on in 2013. I was like very suspicious about a lot of stuff. About script being changed. Direction of story being changed. Because my post was about episode or season six was finished. Disney Star Wars. And so I have suspicion like when the chip was made. And if it was really supposed to be the chip or not. And so he commented on it and um, basically was like, well, all the scripts and the concept were done in 2011. Sure. Okay. Well, if everything's done in, and if you're, if you're showing me concept art, that doesn't mean that the story set in stone with these characters or this concept art, which we're going to get in, in here, which I'm going to prove in here. This picture here is supposed to be Asajj Ventress or one of her concept arts mimicking a Medusa. But, and then so, you know, and then so I have the, the the people who really don't like me. Oh, well, he told you, he set you straight. Not really, because concept art 
is just that they that's just concept and it changes. And what was funny is that the concept art that he shared for the microchips or the 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 biochips it didn't stay it it called them tr um tumors. It didn't call them the biochips. So then that sparked further suspicion on was they not was this a different intention and then it was changed to a microchip so anyway, so that was a little confront. I want to say confrontation, but that was a little bit of what he shared with me. And um, of course, the dis the shills came in. Oh, you were told. Ha oh, ha ha. You were told. Ooh, he told you. You know, kind of deal, which he did not. And so then I questioned the intention of the biochip. I'm like, why? When this art was made, like. Every piece of concept art for that biochip says it's a tumor. So was the intention to be something else? And as they um, wrapped everything up or finished everything up in 2013, they changed it to a biochip. You know, so I raised those questions because, you know, like even with like a new hope, Star Wars now, a new hope and even the movies like. Things changed even on set sometimes when it came to script, when it came to certain storylines or what have you. And then with my question, I shared a picture of Doku that's in the Star Wars, um, Art of Star Wars episode two. Well, Doku's original intention was he was supposed to be like a. Um, an alien with four to six arms. And we know Doku is not that type of alien. So that was the little bit of back and forth I had with um, Pablo Hidalgo. So just to let you guys know. <laughs> just to let you guys know that your girl here is being noticed, I guess you could say. Um, so with this right here, and I want to see what you guys are saying. But with this right here, this is an image here of Asajj. Well, the character, one of the images for the character we now know as Asajj Ventress. So it's very interesting here to see like one of the concept arts here with, you know, like some some markings on the face and what have you. Let me see what you guys have to say. And we'll get into her lore pretty soon, but I wanted to get in, into the making of her first. Um, um, Silvar is is only um, when um, does my new phone change message my message? I don't know. I'm I'm very notorious for screwing on my own text off my phone when it, when I'm tweeting and all that stuff. Um, Red Hoodwink says it's so it's bullying when you try to give some EU lore info, but it's not when you they um when they're when they send their mobs to attack us for questioning Disney canon correct. That's how it goes. What the what the jabroni does best is breaking canon and lore. Correct. Grand HR di um, director Thrawn. What bull boy retcons his own stuff. Correct. Let me see here. Chuck is here. Hello. The shills will tell you George never cared about the EU. Of course, that's one of their talking points. I wish Lucasfilm learned from Japan that adapting EU material is anime um, form. Let me see that jumped on me. Wow, I got a lot of people talking here. That jumped on me. Woo! I have a lot of comments going on here. And thank you again, Soul Assassin, for sharing that. That's such. And I did a I did a mini a short on that too. If that's what you shared, um, if not, and you shared someone else's video, that's cool. It just gives out the information on that scar. Um, Iron Inquisitor says Lucasfilm said that Lucas um, Lucas loved comics for the visual aspects of it. He's a visual man, exactly. Since his film, since um, he's a filmmaker, correct? And the man doesn't have time to read, and they think that oh well, George doesn't read. Um, well, I I don't expect him to read everything. He's a busy man. Um, let me see here. I spent to read that. You should wear a Spock or a Spock Mac with the off brand Michael Myers. <laughs> and Steezo for life is here. Let's see here. The Bad Batch had Scorch, I believe. Okay. Dime Store. Dime Store. And storm. <laughs> I couldn't even do that fucking right. Dime Store Cowboy. Dun, dun. Yeah. Delta had a camo in the Bad Batch. Didn't say anything, just led a bunch of his stormtroopers after the Bad Batch. Okay. 
Thank you for letting me know. Dave Camaloni, the king of cameos. Oh, Camaloni. <laughs> I wrote that. I, I, I just butchered that. I just butchered that. I'm sorry. This just in for Mr. H reviews. Rumor is that Acolyte has just been canceled and only season one season will be um, produced. That, that's I'm hearing a lot of people spin that now. I don't really care anymore. Honestly, it, it doesn't fucking matter anymore, really. Because it's not a win. It just shows how, I guess you could say, how bad Lucasfilm, the state of Lucasfilm in itself. And do I, I honestly I don't care. I hope that they it collapses and um and Star Wars is not then no more Star Wars is told for a while. Iron Inquisitor says half a million dislikes for the trailer. Wow, correct. I know that was kind of funny. Um, all the Ventress concepts were um, wasted in the um, moment Christopher Lee was hired. Yeah, we're going to get into that. So let's get into that right now. I know you guys have a lot to say here. Holy crap, you do. <laughs> and I love it. You guys are freaking amazing. Gordon and other channel members here. Hey, Laura and chat. Sorry, I'm late. What have I missed? Oh, just the introduction talk of Asajj Ventress with her concept art and a little... Um, a little bit of drama on Twitter and, you know, cause I am the boogeyman now, you know, and, but what have you, oh, and later on our cringe factor is going to be about Yoda being destroyed again. So we'll talk about that later. And let's see that concept was used for the Jedi in TCW when clone killed, um, Jedi before order 66. All right. So let's get into this. So that image I'm going to read off of here instead of trying to read off of the screen. So let me go to the right page because it's easier for me to do this for you guys. All right. So let's click to the other one here. Oh, <laughs> that's the wrong one. <laughs> ah, that's funny. I am so funny today. All right. So here's some more concept art here. We're going to go through the concept art and then we'll get into more of the lore. The search for the Sith villain was a year long journey. So this is about this is about the the Sith villain. You know, we already have Sidious, but who is his apprentice after Maul? That's what they are trying to figure out. And the subject of um um McCraig's first episode two drawing, McCraig had followed a similar hard creative road during episode one when he developed Darth Maul on the Phantom Menace. He, um, he'd flirt with concepts for a female Sith. So this concept, these concepts here that we're seeing that we see now, like um, that was used in TCW and stuff like that were original concept art for a female Sith and was determined that the new Sith would be a woman. Wow. And then he goes on to say, I felt this was a great opportunity to introduce a strong woman character to give girl fans an icon imagine okay so we want a strong sith character to give the girl fans an icon <laughs> mccraig said with an evil smile this the challenge was finding a new archetype that would stand up there with darth vader and darth maul one of McCraig's concept was a medusa-like figure and another idea the artist pictured padme as a dark queen I drew Padme with her huge hairdo and impeccable white painted face from episode one, but she turns around and the paint is cracked. She has the menacing stare. By this time, Dharma was aboard and developing a vampiric shaven, um, shaven haired female stiff. So there you go. So this, this is the evolution. I'm going to turn off my heater. Let me see here. There you go. All right. So this is like the evolution of the concept art of this female Sith. All right. And then this quote says, Star Wars is a once upon a time story. It's about mythology, 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 geez, and archetypes. It doesn't have that kind of evil you see in the silence of the lambs. What it has is devils and demons, things that um, represent evil. That's what is said. So this this right here, 
concept art. Now this is very similar and you will see like concept art or not concept. You will see them as the Dathomirian witches of TCW, not the Dathomirian witches that we seen from um, Courtship of Princess Leia. Let's see here. Female C Sith plus role model equals suicide squad much. <laughs> That's funny. Their female Sith are now human girl boss with half shaved hair. And then the Sith are not role models. Why do they always worship the villains? I I think they wanted a villain that girls can, you know, still relate to. You you can you can you can like a villain. Doesn't necessarily have to be a role model, but you can have a favorite villain. So, and I think that was his point. I don't think his point was well, how people, how they're, how they're portraying their villains of today. Like how they're trying to make, oh, they're just misunderstood people, you know, kind of deal. I think that this concept here was basically just giving a female villain that, you know, um, girls and even boys can, um, can like. Because, you know, I asked you guys, who is your favorite Sith or who is your favorite villain? Because we have them. We have our favorite Sith and villains. Female Sith before Disney. Point goes to Lucas. Ding, ding, ding. And then this book is the concept art of episode two, Attack of the Clones. So let's see here. Let's go on. Let me go ahead and click the button here. Now, here we go. Some more concept art that we see. And look who it is. We know her in, you know, the multimedia project as Asajj Ventress. Asajj Ventress, here we are. So we'll get into more of this development of this art and what happens, this concept art and what happens. Some of you guys may know what, what the, this result is. So Dharma Powers, Sith drew on his um, youthful fascina um, fascination with martial arts. So he drew powers on his fascination with martial arts. Um, imagine a female figure embodying athletic grace and samurai sword handled skills, handling skills. The stance I drew from the Sith is about sol um, solidity and grounding with the lower body as an anchor to a slender upper body. I was also trying to think how she moved with her sa two sabers. Other concept for the female Sith ranged from chromed plated to, um, fembot to a witch, to a witch. So he had this like um, idea of a witch, but that doesn't mean that she was Dathomarian. It just means that, you know, there's there's this um, like a witchiness of her because Sith, you know, women, Sith women and men are not necessarily witches, right? So, but just to have that grace and that look. Let's see here. And thank you, Fractured Filter. All right, let's see here. You can have a villain you love to hate, but said role, um, but he said role model. Again, it's not like, you know, like how we think about it today, like, oh, a villain role model. I, I really don't think like the, the thought process back then versus today is very different, very different. Um, let's see here. And um, so let's click on to the next one here. And so this is amazing. Look at this. And so you begin to see her tattoos, the the, the little marks of where her tattoos are going to be and all that. And the concept of her um, upper body um, having form form fitting clothing, I guess you can say, so she can move around with. And then also like the samurai type skirt um, and her curved sabers. So you can see all the concept sketches, everything de being developed here, which I find very fascinating. I found it's it's really cool, really, really cool. And um, whoopsie, it's really, really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this screen here, remove, whoops, there we go. And I'm going to get into the next one. Okay. If you are on my Twitter, you, Twitter, you can become members of my community posts there. And this is where I put up a lot of these images, a lot of these images. So let me share the next screen here and we'll go from there. There we go. Uh, 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 this is it, there we go. 
All right. So the next one here, and um, this is the concept art from um, from Attack of the Clones. So this is back in um, 2003-ish or something like that. Before then, this is before then. So this is before episode one or, or after episode one. I'm not before. Sorry about that. Yeah, so this is non-Disney material. This is non-Disney material. So if you're just wondering, let's see here. Let's get to the screen here. Now, this is awesome right here. So you see more development here of like concepts of having feathers and looking menacing with like some kind of Sith mask, I guess you can say. And um, <laughs> it's so funny and you can't really see it well here. But um, Soul Assassin shared with me, like up in the top corner, left hand corner of that image there, just above the winged, the winged concept art. If you look at Asajj Ventress in um, in the Bad Batch, her outfit is almost like that outfit, almost like that outfit. So there's very there's striking similarities to that. So if you look up above the winged um, image here, and um, Dharma Powers has to say. As a kid, I was interested in the martial arts. I think I will. I was um, pilfering from my subconscious bits and pieces of martial arts I've seen for a Sith. So, and we know that she fights with you know very. She's very graceful, very athletic fighter from what we've seen, and um, and he also says on the other concept art that I shared just before I switched screens. My first Sith drawing had her walking downstairs. I gave her a slim upper. Oh, yeah, I read that already. Sorry about that. I thought I didn't. All right. And then he goes on. This goes on to say, around the third month of the Sith concept work, Lucas suggested the artist try to robot or try the robot android look, which led to the most radical ideas of all. The next idea was, um, was that perhaps the Sith Lord was a shape shifter that could literally move around between sexes and races and all kinds of things. But Lucas, but as Lucas developed his script, he finally decided the character needed to be more human than alien. So it's interesting, like this evolution of this concept art of having a female Sith, having a female Sith and going through this evolution. And the thing is, is that she was never supposed to be um, like a Dathomarian type witch kind of thing. She was always supposed to be Sith, this, this character here. And it goes on to say, most of Power's um, Sith art, let me go ahead and change the screen there so you're on the same page with me. There we go. Do you see any similarities here? Do you see any similarities here too? Like maybe what you've seen on, in TCW? Let me know. Most of Power's um, Sith Sith art featured lightsabers with a curved um, aberesque design to the handles. Power also Power also reworked his original Sith look, trying out an alien head. The drawing of a character seemingly cloaked in an executioner's mask. That's the one we've seen earlier was actually an attempt to throw the face into shadow and highlight the details. Leathery costume, which emphasized strong horizontal lines like the belly of an alligator. He explained, I wanted to make her look tough. He also drew up some male figures. We tried everything possible for a Sith. We ranged, uh, we ranged across the board from androids to Hannibal Lecter, McCraig said and recalled. I thought of Lecter's expression and the drawing realization you'd have that you were around a deadly thing if you were in the room with him. So the, the realization you'd have if you were in the room. <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> it was a subtle shift. But I, um, subtle, subtle shift. But I then began drawing elderly humans with um, that were strong, not feeble. <laughs> so the next one you're going to probably laugh at. Um, McCraig was personally disappointed that the search for the Sith veered away from a female character. The first drawing I did for episode two was a female Sith, McCraig recalled. I remember George coming up and, and looking at it and asking what it was. It's your Sith, George, I said. 
it's got to be a woman. In Darth Vader and Darth Maul, we had two male Sith Lords. And I thought this was a great opportunity to put a strong woman character out there. Now, midget, imagine like the strong female character back then versus now. Okay. So real, you know, you have to realize times, time was different back then, but you kind of see the evolution of the thought process of like, um, of this diversity. So you, you make your call on that. Creating the Sith was a challenge, but it was, it was, um, it was great. Dharmic powers included. The difficult part was refining and making subtle, subtle changes. It's difficult to get what George wants. So they're, they're trying to, they're now in negotiations on this character. What should be it? Get it more human after they, you know, threw out some alien concepts and stuff like that. You know, masks concepts, which gets into like the Knights of Old Republic and the lore back there with the Sith with masks and stuff. <laughs> and, um, and now we're getting into, you know, now it's probably not going to be a woman. Now it's probably not going to be a woman. So you have all these little concept arts here. And um, Mc, um, McCraig says, or McCaig says, to me, it's not just drawing the figure that's important. It's all about who's in there, the spirit that a character manifests. So, yeah, you need to have this, this essence in this character, um, the essence of the character. And, um, and let it convey and i guess you can say the vibes of it just like um share how menacing they can be now here is this right here so this one right here i was giggling at because it almost reminds me of et <laughs> i'm sorry it does i was like oh sage ventress as et <laughs> Well, you know, her name wasn't Asajj Ventress, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. It was so funny. I was like, oh, man, I just couldn't help myself. I'm going to see what you guys are saying before we move on. Let's see here. Um, Ogre says, they call it the long march through the institutions for a reason. They intentionally use terms that plausibly are with plaus plausible den deniability. <laughs> bruh look at this, this dude <laughs> i know i was cracking up i haven't visited this like i really haven't sat down and really gazed at the pictures like all of them you know and um i forgot all about this concept of this character here <laughs> et as a sith <laughs> An ET woman, female as a Sith. Am I assuming gender? Is that wrong? Should I not assume gender? Anyways, <laughs> they call it the law. Oh, I already read that one. <laughs> uh <laughs> I can't help it. It was hilarious. I'm laughing then as I'm laughing now because it's just, it's crazy. Imagine your ET as a Sith. Oh my God. One of the early concept for Darth Maul was a female design. And I think, I, I think it's in here. Um, I think are not in here in, in the episode one, it's over on my shelf. Um, is George Lucas sexist? I don't know. Because from what I would have been told from these guys who were so upset that I'm the boogeyman now, what are they going to do to exist on social media with my opinions? <laughs> And, and they try to use like George Lucas, like, oh, he's this liberal and he's this and he loves diversity. And I'm like, yeah, my point was is that, you know, us fans, us, us fans and the old fans are the longtime fans didn't, you know, wasn't afraid of diversity. That's why Star Wars became a hit. <laughs> you know, I don't know what. I don't know. Yeah, it's Red Finger points out unlimited power i don't know how to do I, it's been a long time since i watched et like et phone home unlimited power with his little red finger her little red finger highlighting and pointing out and maybe maybe the sith lightning is red who knows <laughs> et has a rack <laughs> mm, let's see here et has a rack <laughs> Well, ET, yeah, they the ET is in Star Wars. It's they're in they're in um the chambers, the Senate chambers, you know, because even Spielberg asks um George Lucas, did you put ET in there as an Easter egg? And he's like, Yep, 
you know, so that's a confirmation. Imagine if Lucasfilm hired a sweet baby or black girl gamer employee. They can hire all they want to right now. Let's let, let it all burn. Melissa Lord says, it also looks like if one of those crystal skull aliens from Indy before they died. Oh, that's right, too. It's, see, this, this is what happens when I haven't watched Indy in a while. I forget. But yeah. But then it, I guess you could trace it back to E.T. too, right? You can trace it back to looking like E.T. It's crazy how E.T. species is canon to Star Wars, right? Let's see here. Now... I, we know why E.T. wanted to phone home. Yep, he, he left his wife in the galaxy far, far away. <laughs> they did include E.T.'s in the Senate. Yep, exactly. <laughs> E.T. is a Sith Lord. <laughs> and Ventress looks like she drank that um, chili beer. This is so much fun. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. Soul Assassin says Lucas and Spielberg were known to put something from each other's film in their movies. Correct. <laughs> oh my God. And my laughing and carrying on is not even having Mr. Toby budge. He's like sprawled out on this table as long as he could be sleeping like a cat does. He's saving his energy for later. Tyrone Azilla says, yes, the original concept for Maul was more of a nightmare witch. It almost reminds me of the Wraith Queen that appeared in the Stargate Atlantis. So there you go. So some interesting facts. I'm going to leave E.T. here for your guys' viewing pleasure. <laughs> for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> All right. So here are some interesting um Fun facts for you guys here before we get more into the lore. I know we're coming up on the hour, but the cringe factor is probably not going to last very long. So we'll we'll still talk about Asajj because this is what we need to do. The true Asajj Ventress and what, you know, how how these care, how sh the character design evolved into who we see her at in the EU. One interesting fact is that she wasn't for she didn't first appear in Tarvasi's Clone War. She appeared in the Jedi Mace, Mace Windu comic first before then. Both came out the same year. Mace, Mace Windu comic came out um, February 2003. And then um, then we had a Tarvasi Clone Wars happen later that year, about November, October, November, or something like that. Um, yeah, so you know, many people think, oh, she, she, you know, it was in um, Tardavasi's Clone Wars um, first. No, but that's when you first, well, I wouldn't say you first see her visually because she was, it's a comic. You see her in the comic. So that's an interesting little bit of tidbit. But another one is, is that um, Leland Chi is the one that suggested her name. And um, he suggested Asajj, the first name of Ventress, naming her after the character Asaji from um, er, um, Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood. And so that's how her name came to be. Leland Chi. And going with George's theme from the Kurosawa themes that he used to create these Jedi and Sith. She originally was to be named Juno Eclipse. Another interesting fact right here that I shared on my Twitter community page. Um, but but that name was changed as the name didn't sound villainy enough. So Juno Eclipse. Now, does that name ring a bell? Does that name ring a bell? So there you go. Let's see here. And send the pic to Tim for this week's expanded booty verse to see how he reacts. <laughs> but his is all about the booty, not the boobs. But hey, you never know. But yeah, I should, huh? Hey, hey, open airlock. <laughs> Tim, is this your next you know, expanded booty verse. <laughs> and then, oh, nice catch. Okay, I know what you guys are talking. Let's see here, right here. Yes, original concept from all. Yeah, I read that. Okay, that's what you're chat. That's what you're chatting about. Um, ET recognized Yoda. Mm -hmm. The Easter egg must be a Lucasfilm cinematic universe. <laughs> and here we go. Let's see here. Juno Eclipse Star Killer would be surprised. <laughs> yep. So this very interesting fun facts here for you guys, and um, and then of course you know hit her appearance like we went through is like you know her image to be like look like a samurai with you know um you know with all the fun concepts of you know how her her hilt is um 
is bowed a little bit and fitting that concept and such. And um, I think it's very interesting. So let's get into the talk. So you know, you guys know, or you should know, or do you know, I'm not going to assume what you know, you know, because that would be rude of me, um, that her home planet is not Dathomir, right? That her home planet is not Dathomir. So it is Ratatak. And if you guys know, I'm an artist and I've been doing concept art and I haven't picked up my and finished the series of concept art that I've been doing. I wouldn't say it's concept art, but it's my um, it's my work series I'm doing of Star Wars characters with their home planet or their orange origin planets. Um, my next one that I have not even picked up and started painting whatsoever is Boba Fett, but I'm not using Camino. I'm going to use Slave One. So I haven't really um, fully designed that one yet. So I never picked it up. But I do have a Saj Ventress in front of her home planet, Rat Attack. And it's called Mistri Mistress of Rat Attack. She is not a Dathomirian. She has never been a Dathomirian. That was just something that Filoni, again, changing something. Even though he said changing a character would be so rude. So rude. You know, so rude. Because he's so fucking rude. He don't care. He is fucking rude. That's all I got to say about him. Let's see here. And let's see here. Now there are some lore um, so I got to learn. How did the whole Skywalker Starkiller discussion go down? That would be for another episode of Calf Chats. In fact, I do want to get into game talk a little. Like the development of game talk. Even though... Um, I can say that I grew up playing games. I stopped because I got into band, like all this nerdy, geeky shit. I got into band. I was in the art club. I ended up becoming a dancer on our dance team as well for school. So I did all kinds of shit. I did. I did. So with all that being said, I, I games went to the back burner for me. Like everything got pushed aside because I was so busy with that other stuff. So busy sitting down and creating art but i would love to sit down and talk about the development of the games like um force unleashed and how that all came about i think that would be interesting because i have a lot of you know um, um subscribers and members that are gamers that are familiar with these games and going behind the scene and talking about that would be fun just like talking for about behind the scenes with tardavoski's clone wars and stuff let's see here uh, <laughs> yes, smash that like button for the band geek. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys, you guys are probably familiar with American Pie. I can go on with a lot of band, band jokes, especially with that movie, but we won't go there right now. <laughs> we won't go there right now. Ventress was a warlord, not a space witch. And her her beginning was tragic. And then her ending, I would say, you could say, I, I want this kind of tragic, but kind of like she's done. She's done. It's like you get the the expression or the or you get her expression of like she's done. She's she's like um by Felicia towards her end, towards her end, and we don't see her anymore because she's done. She's seen shit, she's done shit. She's experienced shit. You know, her, her means of turning dark, I wouldn't say is justified, but damn, she had every right to be how she was in the beginning. Every right, right. You know, from losing your parents to losing your Jedi master, being orphaned and losing your Jedi master. Man, let me see here. Possible future episode. Cool. Yeah. I, there's all kinds of ideas for these episodes, you guys. There's like so much to chat and talk about. What great content. Later, Lucasfilm uses Starkiller name for a planet from the Force for the Force Awakens. Yeah. But um Starkiller was basically um the Skywalker's last name for a while in the beginning. So that's the origin of that name. 
that's the origin of that name. Anakin's fight with Ventress in Clone Wars 03 is my second favorite duel next to Luke and Vader's from the Empire Strikes Back. That's pretty cool. That that right there, that that clip of their fight, that's that's good. That I mean Tartavovsky's animation like and to tell a story with less words, less conversation, I guess you can say, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, she faked her death in front of Obi-Wan after Doku betrayed her. So let me see. I'm sorry if I missed you guys' comments. Let me go ahead and so basically, um, whoo, uh, let's see here. She she lost her parents. So she was never born on Dathomir. Never born on Dathomir. She was born on um on Rat Attack. And she basically lost her parents um, to a lot of like, um, like I could say gang pirates kind of people, I guess you can say. And fun fact, every single mark on her face, those dark marks, those are tattoos, are those warlords she killed. Every single one. She was orphaned. She came from a well-popular family rulers, I guess you can say. She was orphaned because of them. She was picked up by um, a Jedi who was basically a um, was uh, sent out to that region. Like, you know, he's a sentinel, I guess you can say. And um, and I think he got stranded there. And I have to revisit that story. So if did he get stranded there or not? I'm not I don't remember. But um, he ended up noticing her force potential and started training her. So her her masters basically is Kai um Narik Narik and then her second master basically was Doku. She was his acolyte. Now there's a difference. They they call him acolyte. She was like his assa assassin. So but potentially if Doku would have killed Sidious and he became the master, then potentially she is an apprentice. Let's see her. She even made a shrine to him. Yep. He got stranded there. That's right. That's and I haven't visited that story in a while, and I should have done that. Um, you know, um, oh, actually, I did watch a a clip of um, a clip of her life um on YouTube, but I just didn't remember. I just couldn't remember. She watched um her parents get murdered. Correct. Very tragic. Was supposed to be a villain of Attack of the Clones. Yes, she was supposed to be the the other Sith. So we have a Doku, and but the original concept was that Sith apprentice was to be a female, female character, and then we got Doku. So that's the evolution of that character, of that concept art that ended up being um Doku. Basically, not not that saying that this is him. Um, that you're seeing in front of your screen, but eventually George is like, no, we need another male figure for the Sith. And um, so the concept then started um, of her then, and let me go ahead and change the screen. Now, I don't think you want to look at a um, ET character. So what we see here, let me see here. Whoopsie. I'm going to go ahead and bring this one up. Hopefully you see it. There you go. So what you see here is what is shown in um, the EU under the Mace Windu comic and then on Tardavosky's Clone Wars and then it evolved from there all the way through the multimedia project. And, and she has had her confrontations with, um, with Obi-Wan and with Anakin after um, she lost her master. She went dark. She ended up being recruited by Doku. You know, that's a that's another wonderful story. I don't want to get too much into these stories because there's a lot to tell. But I want to, you know, give you guys enough. So if you haven't really researched her character arc, then you go ahead and do that. Um, so she became one of his acolytes. And um, she also in prison, she also took um, Obi-Wan hostage. It's another thing there. So she, he he was her prisoner. At one point, 
at one point. Yeah, smash the like button. Um, let me see here. I hope it gets um, bibliography so we know which books, comics, etc. to read and what is what order to know her canic story, um, canical, canonical story. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. Lee Doku did have more of a presence, but are really cool though. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Christopher Lee as Doku. Yeah, I, I agree. He had a wonderful presence as you know, um, Darth Tyrannus, Tyrannus, um, the Sith apprentice to Sidious. Um, Kai Merrick is her uncle Ben, while her parents is her is her Martha. Let's see here. Ventress' backstory is worse than Bruce Wayne's and Peter Parker's combined. Yeah, I, I like how you're making these comparisons. I really, really do. I really, really do. And then. Yeah, Obi Wan and Alpha Seventeen, and isn't isn't after isn't during that time, and um, after they get rescued or they're freed or what have you, that then Alpha gets a normal name. Is that I think that's the evolution of the the clones getting getting a a common name. I think, or maybe it's after that. Like I'm, it's like I have to go visit these comics again. But I think this during this time frame is when you started seeing clones getting their um, names, getting named. Let's see her. Mm-hmm. Sure did. Asajj and Maul are both assassins who were allowed to work among the two Sith. So Maul basically mm -hmm. was an apprentice in a sense. But yes, he was an assassin too. Like um, uh, you would say acolytes or whatever. But yes, exactly. And then after after Sidious became the master, then then Maul became the apprentice. So Maul was trained Sith. Ventress was not correct. So she she had Jedi training, and then she um, really didn't acquire training after that because Doku was already confident in her skills and what she needed, to, what she had, and her a lot of her hate. And a lot of her um, all, her circumstances just fueled who she was at the time. Fueled who she was. Anakin nicknamed Alpha. He couldn't. Um, he couldn't care less. <laughs> okay, so Alpha Seventeen couldn't care less what they called him. It was young Anakin who decided to nickname him Alpha. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying that's where we started seeing these names. Um, be these um like given common names other than a designation designation um their designation and stuff like that so i thought that was pretty neat um let's see here this art reminds me of brahm he used a lot of dark grim art yeah so they were trying to make her dark and grim and that was the whole point the whole point and so you know People thought that, you know, Anakin got his scar in Tardavovsky's Clone Wars when they first fought. And that's not the case. So Anakin got his scar when she was um, looking for him on Coruscant. And he went basically to confront her, I guess you can say, or they found each other. And they started dueling. She knew she knew who um, Padme was and is to him. And so she was using that against him. And he needed to protect Padme, but he also needed to protect their secrets in a sense, right? And um, so they dueled. Um, it was in the cityscape. And, you know, they had their exchange, their words and stuff like that. And he ended up, you know, um, somewhat defeating her, I guess, and sending her down into the depths of Coruscant, which, you know, a lot of wires, if you read the comic, you know, she, a lot of wires probably broke her fall from what it looks like, but she did get a little blow on his face with her lightsaber. And so that's where that scar came from. And he then never really, um, went to have it healed with Bacta or anything like that. So he never got any treatment for it. So he kept his scar. He kept his scar. So did Ventress ever use force lightning? I don't, I really never seen her use force lightning whatsoever. Never, but I know we've seen Doku use for, force lightning, I believe, but I never seen her. Yeah. 
Understood. Let's see here. And no, Ventress didn't use for that. Yeah, okay, I thought so. But it was used on her by Doku. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm recalling. It was used by her. Anakin versus Asajj Coruscant. It was used by her. And then, um, yeah, so very interesting character. And then, you know, so you have her, um, you know, she's, like I said, she's, you know, fueled with hate, revenge, her circumstances of her life of losing her parents, basically, you know, without losing herself, being found by, you know, um, her master being trained in the Jedi ways. So I don't even know under TCW and under Filoni and her continued story that's in Disney, if they ever refer back to her Jedi training. But I think I seen a clip of them trying to say, oh, you're a Jedi. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm just, I just understand their ways. Now, I don't know if that's hinting that sh who she, her origins are from or what. I, I, I don't, I don't think that they are considering her and her master at all, her master at all, Mr. Kai. I don't think that, you know, I don't think they're going to keep, you know, even that bit of continuity in because there's, they want so much to make it their own that they will bastardize these characters as well. So, but, you know, like I said, I've seen clips of this because of Asajj. And what's crazy is that she, you know, in the Bad Batch, she's like, um, you know, I have so many lives, you know, basically. And I, I shared this on Twitter. And what made me giggle, because like, they're like, you survived? Basically, it's like, they're, you know, you survived. And she goes like, I, I have so many lives, you know, kind of. And I'm paraphrasing. And what's funny is that this goes with no one is really gone, really, truly gone or whatever that quote is that you hear Luke say. And so many people are like, well, you know, she's a Dathomarian witch and that they have that that magic to, you know, resurrect themselves and what have you. So are they saying that she's now a zombie that if she struck down that she's going to turn into that um, that black green ooze that if you've seen other ones turn into after they are killed so is she being controlled by dathomarian magic and who is who is responsible for her then and i think that this is a cheap cop out to say oh well she's a dathomarian witch so of course she's gonna survive she's got that magic that's a fucking cop out that's a cop out for no one's really gone you know using that plot armor Oh, she's a Dathomarian witch. She can survive because she has magic. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead. Before we start wrapping up and going into cringe factor, I'm going to go ahead and pull up another piece of stuff here um, that goes into the um, the disciples book or whatever it's called for her, with her and Quinlan Voss. And I got to and I, I'm just going to remind you guys, I'm like speaking to the choir here, preaching to the choir. But we know Quinlan Voss, after everything was said and done in Order 66 and he survived the attack on Kashyyyk, he went into exile with his family. That Colleen and his little son met him and they went into exile. He promised her after the Clone Wars, we are going to be together. I am no longer going to be a Jedi and we're going to be together, rightfully be together. And that's what he did. He didn't go out and just all of a sudden find Asajj Ventress and decide that they are going to have this crazy, weird relationship. That's I call that bullshit. So let's here you go. So here's from that book. I think it's called Dark Disciples or something like that. Because then they say they hint that he goes and turns dark or something. I don't know. If you guys know the story, let me know. Ventress took a shredding, a sh um, shuddering breath. The tension left her body and she relaxed into his embrace as her eyes began to close. No. Asajj, Voss begged. Asajj, please don't go. Please don't go. Her eyes flickered open and a corner of her mouth turned up. I have to, Quinlan. It's my time now. <laughs> My sisters are waiting. And uh, we know by this time, like Dathomir and all of them are nearly extinct, right? For such as he had never known, known seized Voss. And he tightened his arms around her 
as if by holding on, he could somehow prevent death from taking her. Please, please don't go. Or please don't, you know, whatever. You must let me go, my love, Ventress said, her voice so gentle, so tender, and she smiled lovingly. It's the Jedi way. And she was gone. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? She died. But that also tells me, oh my God, it's just like feels so alien to think that Voss is like gave up on his love, Colleen, and his baby boy, which in his culture, like family is the structure, you know, like when he got deceived by his aunt and his clan, like his aunt and, and some of the clan members, that in itself you know, was heartbreaking for him because the, um, you know, because his, his, his race, his culture, I wouldn't say race, but his culture and, and, um, and who he is and stuff, you know, existed on clan members. And he was in a high prominent family that ruled the planet on. Um, and so, um, so this is hard to believe that, you know, this is the Voss. This is, this is Voss because it's not Voss. And so let me see here. Where's my headless Doku? <laughs> I don't know. He's floating around, you know, trying to talk some sense into her. I don't know. Um, I thought Quinlan Voss was married to Colleen. He is. He is. This is Disney full lore that they can't fucking keep straight. Yeah, I read it. Voss turns to the dark side when he finds out Sasash killed his master. <sighs> yep. And let's see here. Um, they've had a flashback with her and her master in TCW. So I guess that's what they were referring to as a bad batch. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I haven't watched TCW in a long time. There's some things that I'm not recalling anymore. And I thought about doing a rewatch just to refresh my memory and stuff like that. And then, but seeing how Matt Wilkins is kind of suffering through his rewatch, I'm like, mm, should I do that? So let's ask him, since I despise the Dathomirian witches, everything has to be a witch with baloney. Well, because his wife, his wife's a witch. Um, Ventress is now a cat who will show up in um, Ahsoka season two. And death is cheap. Yeah. So I thought I'd share this with you guys because it's like they, you, is there a loophole? What? Because she says she's got to go be with her sisters. Well, her sisters are dead. Right. Because at this point, if you look into the, the, the so-called death Marian, um, lore for Disney star Wars, they're dead. They're like big scenes. That's why for, for Ahsoka, People were questioning why the Dathomirian witches were back. So there you go. There you go. So they, they make things shit up just so that they can put something in there. <laughs> Let me see. Anakin disarmed Doku. I had to say it. <laughs> the council decides that they need to end a war by assassinating Doku. So the um, assigned Voss to attack himself attach himself to Ventress to assist her in completing the her um teeth attempt she does and he falls to the dark wow so they're taking that beautiful arc that do you know of you know Voss going in and um and infiltrating from the inside to find out who the Sith is so they're taking that arc from the Republic comics and then having it like this, like, and bastardizing it. It's like, like I said, notice that compare both sides. Always compare what is done in a George Lucas era. If it's done in the slightest way in the Disney era, it's usually turned on its back. It's used the opposite with the intention. You know, so, so there you go. So that's, that's something that I've been seeing a lot lately. In the Republic comic series, the two never met. Correct. All right. So with that being said, is there anything else that you want to discuss about Ventress or should we move on to our cringe factor? Should we move on to cringe factor, which is, like I said, is going to be a shorter kind of topic, but it might just really get to you. I don't know. But, you know, let's let's go to her closing her ending. So her last stand, I guess you could say, was Boz Pity. And 
Anakin impelled her with his lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, if, I, if I wouldn't have said lightsaber, <laughs> that could have went so many ways. <laughs> and um, and because of Obi Wan feeling compassion for her and seeing how tragic she was from losing her family, losing her master, and just acting out in hate and rage and all this stuff, you know, because of the circumstances in her life. At, Obi-Wan was feeling pity for her. He wanted her to have a chance. And she even told him, you were right about me, basically, because he was there was he was trying to talk her back to the light. I guess you can say a little bit of a hope he's seen that that she was just conflicted, but she wasn't too far gone was what how he looked. But then it goes into like um, how he feels about um, about Vader later, you know, because he couldn't save Ventress. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't redeem. He couldn't bring back. And so that's how he felt about Vader or Anakin later on. So a little bit of like back and forth with that kind of emotion and stuff. <laughs> uh, I love to make you guys laugh and see somehow the death of which the death, the death of which the death of the death of which returns. Yeah. And so he's holding her on her death and he's like, I'm going to send you back to the temple. You're going to have a proper burial, a proper funeral proceedings, basically. And so as they load her onto the ship and he thinks she, and she, she stages her death, I believe that's that's what I got from the comic. And um, they load her up and, you know, with respect and what have you and um, her and a couple of the, the clones troopers that are responsible for her take off. And basically she takes over the ship. And she's gone. She's like, bye, Felicia. She's gone. She's like done with the galaxy. She's done with everything. And that's the impression I got from this, this Asajj Ventress. It's like she's done with everything that has happened to her, everything that's going on, all the circumstances. And so to me, that felt like that was her ending and that she was doing a new beginning away from all of this. That's how that felt to me. I don't know if you guys read her ending story. Let me know and let me know if you felt that same way. And then, of course, you know, Quinlan's not even in this picture, really. But with Quinlan's ending, far, far different than what she went through. Quinlan kept his promise to Colleen after the Clone Wars. I'm not going to be a Jedi anymore. Well, now he's not. And she introduces their baby boy. He gives him some traditional um, Kifu markings of his clan. And he settles down. He he basically disappears in a sense from the galaxy. And I think there's a hint of the Quin Quinlan's Voss family later on in the lore. But other than that, that's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. Let's see. That's all she wrote. Let me see what Soul says. Obi-Wan would think of Asajj sometimes when he was... Yes. Thank you for reminding me when he was hiding. I wonder if he would have taken her as an apprentice to give her a chance. And then I think in one of his books, his standalone books, and I forgot which one it is. Maybe it's The Legend of Obi-Wan Kenobi or... It's one of those. He 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 seen a desert flower and he noticed that it went got bloomed and the bloom was like a, a white to a grayish color and it reminded him of this Asajj Ventress. And then from there he started remembering her, remembering of her. And um that was that was so sad. It was it was kind of heartbreaking to him to recall someone that you know seemed like an enemy, but he seen um how conflicted she was in her circumstances where they took her to. And so that was very interesting. That was a very interesting, like, um, callback. Very interesting callback. In the Essentials, Gui um, Essentials Guide to the Force book, it mentions that Obi-Wan sometimes thought about the, um, yeah, exactly. Let's see here. Quill Quillen narrowly escaped Kashyyyk after Order 66. Yes, he was like, literally, he had to pop hide and heal himself too that was freaking crazy he was like his body was ravished um crazy stuff and i'd rather um ventress just fl uh, flew away never to be seen again compared to what floney did correct and that's 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 how i've seen that and that's how it's always gonna be for me 
Um, sometimes you don't need to know anymore about the character. You know, just like Yoda with not knowing his species and him being somewhat of a mystery. Sometimes a person's ending can be a mystery. Sometimes we don't need to know. We don't need to know every single damn thing, right? As long as it doesn't break continuity. Somehow Asajj returns. Yep. Yep, I have that one there. Very good stuff. Let's see here. The life and legend of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Correct. And Filoni gets in the way of himself. Filoni is full of himself. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start moving into our next topic here. So if you guys want to go grab some drinks, feel free to do that. And I will put on this. Prepare yourself for Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire. The evil empire has struck back with a vengeance. And a new villain, the crime lord Shizor, schemes to replace Darth Vader as the Emperor's second in command. With Han Solo held frozen in carbonite by bounty hunter Boba Fett, it's the rebellion's darkest hour. Now, join Jedi warrior Luke Skywalker, hard charging Chewbacca, and go undercover with heroic pilot Dash Rendar and his booming outrider. But can Han Solo be freed and Shizor be stopped? Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire. Look for the authentic figures and vehicles from Kenner. Let's see here. So uncivilized. All right, so Screen Rant always delivers for Cringe Factor. So what do we have here? What do we have here? One fallen Jedi told Yoda, told, told, told Yoda blah, 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 about the Sith 200 years before the Phantom Menace, and he didn't notice. So do you see a common theme here? And it's funny how the bloody lightsaber is right here. Um, do you see the common theme here, you guys? What direction do you think Disney Lucasfilm is taking Yoda by the time we see him in The Phantom Menace? Where do you think he's actually taking this, this, this character? And do you agree with it? Do you agree with it? Now, this comes from a story from their, you know, notable <laughs> Ha Republic. Yep. Oh, great. High Republic. The High Republic. And let me see. Asajj just turned to another Reva. So, so with this, this is the direction they're taking Yoda. It is his fault that the Jedi have fallen. Like, totally his fault. Not that, you know, um, maybe they, you know, just stayed with the same techniques of preparing to battle the Sith that they were doing a hundred or a thousand years ago, which he recalls in the, um, in the revenge of the Sith novelization, because he does reflect back on what happened. Where did the Jedi fail? Right. He recalls all that. He does. He have a lot of, um, reflection and how he could have handled things. And so he holds himself accountable before yes he does because he's being sincere and compassionate and there's a lot of grief there's a lot of heartache of course he's gonna sit you know you know hold himself accountable to things that's common but does it mean that he's solely responsible for the jedi falling no revenge of the sith and i wish i would have recorded this and shared it with you from the audio audiobook, but in Revenge of the Sith, he he even says that over the thousand years, while the Sith were in hiding, when they thought they were extinct, the Jedi prepared to fight the Sith of a thousand years ago. Whereas the Sith who were in hiding studied the Jedi so they can defeat him. So you see the difference. He's he's saying that they stay stat they stay they they fail to evolve in their fighting techniques. And um, and the Sith knew that. The Sith kept an eye on them over the thousand years. Over the thousand years. You know, he's not responsible for how the Jedi were being trained like most of his life. But he does recognize that was something that they failed at is to evolve it as, as an order. Um, in a way to defend themselves against the Sith. And the Sith took advantage of that. 
Let's see here. Yeah, they are making Yoda all the more obvious. Um, they did this in TCW too. I'm getting tired of the victims getting blamed for disasters out of their control. Yes, and and the Jedi are the just like the whole the whole galaxy, the Republic, the Order, everyone, the senators, everyone were victims of the Sith, the revenge of the Sith. They brilliantly, and we talked about this last calf chat, they brilliantly staged themselves in to take control, to manipulate these weak minds, to make it look like the Jedi's, it's the Jedi's fault that they wanted to take over the galaxy. That's what they were doing, is infiltrating from the inside, making people believe that they come with good intentions mind you they didn't know they were sith right they didn't know they were sith but make people you know um believe that they're in there with good intentions for the best of the galaxy and for the best of their livelihoods that was brilliant and then they used jedi's own device against them of if they can't settle a negotiation for peace in a peaceful way that of course the last result's always going to be taking up arms, right? So they use that against the Jedi. The Sith use that against the Jedi. And the Jedi didn't suspect any damn thing. So if you go into and really analyze what the Sith, the revenge of the Sith and what they did. And how the Order was taken advantage of with how they would defend what they would do in defense of and their steps and stuff like that to, um, you know, to defend peace from nego peaceful negotiations to taking up arms. The Sith knew exactly what they were doing, but it's not Yoda's fault. And they're blaming him because of his age, <clears throat> because he was there for like eight, 700 years. Mind you, by the time we get to the OT era, he's like nearly 900 years. So they're blaming him because of his age, because he had total control of the order since his inception to the Jedi Order, I guess. I don't know. We'll go ahead and read, scroll down here pretty soon. Does this sound kind of familiar? I Okay, let me go ahead and scroll up and see what you guys are saying. All right. Let's see here. The High Republic is going to humiliate Yoda because green man bad. There you go. It feels like they're doing the retcons just to destroy those characters and to, um, to spite the fans. Green hashtag green man bad. Let's see here. It feels like they're doing these retcons just to destroy the characters. Oh, I already read that. Damn, that must have jumped on me for whatever reason. Um... Does this sound kind of familiar? <laughs> yes. The reason why Yoda and Luke a, Luke a failure to make Ray's order a success story once her movie is finished. There you go. So let's go ahead and read into this. The survival of the Sith Lord was hinted at during the High Republic. So the survival of the Sith Lords, mind you, in Disney lore, it's not really the two, rule of two anymore, was hinted at during the High or during the High Republic's era long before the Phantom Menace. So about two hundred years, little under two hundred years, though Yoda didn't seem to notice. So it was hinted, and Yoda's just like hmm, whatever, whatever. And this is by Kevin Erdman. Here's our little summary here. You seemingly missed hints about the Sith survival 200 years before the prequels, highlighting their ongoing threat. The journey of the fallen Jedi, Aslan Rel, Rel likely connects to the Sith possibly setting up their act activity in the Acolyte. Yoda failed to see the importance of Rel's wor words about the Sith survival, foreshadowing their presence in Acolyte. So you see what's going on here? Now, mind you, we know, like, Bane and um and the likes of them later, like in the beginning of the rule of two, you know, they there were certain conflicts happened and um there were certain confrontations, but this was a thousand years before. 
And then once we get into like Plagueis' era and Tenebrus and all of them, there, and even with Maul, there were some circumstances where um, Jedi versus what them, the Sith, which they didn't know they were Sith unless it was revealed and then they were killed. So there's circumstances like that. But nothing was revealed because the person, the potential threat of them being revealed because they didn't want to be revealed. That's the thing them being revealed that that potential of them being revealed was basically, you know, um, struck down, you know? So there's that, there's that writing behind that, making sure that they, they make it brilliant and make it according to the continuity of the movies, which is the foundation, which doesn't compromise like characters like Yoda or anybody else. So here we go. And there are there were dark dark jedis during the time and they were very well aware of dark jedis. And in fact Quinlan Boss, one of his apprentices was a dark jedi at one point. Yoda was warned about the Sith during the High Republic in the Star Wars canon um though he didn't seem to notice although there were um they were believed to have been extinct at the end of the Old Republic. Darth Bane's rule of two ensured the Sith's continuation and the cons um, consolidation um, of their power in the shadows. To that end, the survival of the Sith was hinted at 200 years before the events of the Phantom Menace. <clears throat> now, why would they want to hint that? <clears throat> they, they, we already know as the readers, as the readers or whatever, like especially in the original, not necessarily in the Disney lore, um, that the the Sith are hiding. Now, I do want to hint it to the Jedi, and then make it like one of their masters, like one of their pivotal masters at this time. I don't know if he's Grand Master. I don't think he is. I don't know if he is in the Disney lore. If you guys know, let me know. Um. If they want to hint like dangle in front of him and him like be obtuse to it or are not even recognizing that especially when he has so much knowledge pertaining to the city that's going on in shadows of starlight number one carl's soul and a ibram robertson yoda's search for answers after starlight's beacons falls bring him to contact with as as lin rel a fallen jedi who chose to embrace the dark side years prior. So if he's a fallen Jedi, his bust isn't up in the um, Jedi library archives with all the fallen Jedis there. So that right there is a contradiction. But anyways, I'll, I'll go on. However, he's not one of the Sith. Else claims that his journey in the, um, in the dark was for the sake of all force sensitives. So let me get rid of this ad. Dude, I don't want to, I don't want to see a tick. <clears throat> Damn it. Oh, well. You suck. And goodbye. There we go. It's gone. It's gone. All right. So instead, Rel claims that his journey in the dark was for the sake of all force sensitive. Oh, so he's on this horror, um, her heroic journey of not being understood that it's all done with good intention no one blah blah whatever seeking to end the threat of the force pred predators known as the nameless oh, i forgot about that bullshit and that said the fallen jedi does, does make a key reference to the sith which may set up the teased event of light the dark jedi as in need to have known the sith still existed the act was a gift of um, to everyone who touches the force. Jedi, Sith, all of us. I don't know what it's about. The Jedi Grandmaster. Oh, so he's a Grandmaster by that time? Okay. I think, was it during the PT time was when Yoda became a Grandmaster? Or just right before then. Yoda sought to help Azenrel overcome his darkness to learn more about the nameless which the Nil, Nile, Nil, a marauders used to attack Starlight Beacon. Working to free Rao's mind, which had been warped by the dark side, Rao and Yoda partnered together to discover where the Nile have come from. However, Rao uses Yoda's help, um, Yoda's help in his mind of his own agenda. Oh, so it's just an agenda. It's not dark side. It's just agenda. Whatever. Okay. 
Rather than helping Yoda learn more about the nameless Rel destroys an entire section of the city to ensure the death of only leads to the nameless blah 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 believing he was um, saving the Jedi and, and the Sith. Rel notably speaks of both force groups in the present tense. The a gift to everyone who touches the fourth Jedi, Sith, all of us. You told this to Yoda, but Yoda's like, didn't like Sith. What are you talking about? They're gone. So this simple line right here. And Yoda not questioning it. And he just like was passive, like, eh, whatever. Eh, whatever. So there you go. So they're going to use simple lines like this to make you know, Yoda look like he has failed. He, it's, he didn't pay attention. He didn't believe his Jedi of the time. He ignored this simple sentence of, you know, this act was a gift to everyone who touches the Force, Jedi, Sith, all of us. I'm bugging out? What the heck? Was I doing that the whole time? Yikes. They could have um, be dark or they could be dark Jedi who never met Sith. Only one who met the Sith um, grants Omega. There we go. And this. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, let's see here. There we go. Whatever wars. So there you go. So this is something, I guess, being set up for Acolyte and that yo and further setting up how passive Yoda was and that was his fault, his ignorance for not listening to his Jedi or the Jedi giving hints and stuff. And if this if this was truly true, if this is really true in their lore, why didn't this individual he so called like brought back to the light by Yoda or whatever? Why didn't he talk to the council? Okay. I don't know what's going on with that. I last minute um, still plugged in my, um, my mic and I didn't test it. So that's probably it. I just be right before we, right as we were going live, I plugged in my mic. So that could be it. That happened last time when I plugged my mic in very spontaneously after unplugging it and not checking everything out. They really want to make Luca's character stupid. Correct. <laughs> Hashtag blame Toby. Toby's awake and he's gone now. He's awake and he's gone now. So I wanted to share further evidence of this. Um, how they are making Yoda very incompetent. Very passive. And he is going to be... Basically, he is to blame. And then so because he was so arrogant and he was so passive and, you know, among a lot things that he just passed on this ignorance to Luke and so that's why he went into exile that's why he went into exile and said the Jedi must die basically the Jedi must end um, once Lucasfilm finally does the Rey era Rey and her Jedi order are not allowed to fail only victories after victories after victories so there you go guys I told you this wasn't going to be long. I just wanted to bring up something that shares that um, the destruction of Yoda's character. And again, this author goes on. Yoda was too distracted to realize the importance of Aslan Rell's words. Surprisingly, there is no clear reaction from Yoda. Yes, just like I said, I didn't have to finish reading this. Um, Yoda in response to the critical reference to the Sith survival. Again, I pointed out, why doesn't Yoda say the Sith are gone? You know, I'm pointing that out. However, this is likely because so much life was lost um, thanks to Rel, a fallen Jedi whom Yoda had vouched for on the counts to the council and had claimed as his responsibility. Oh, hmm. Okay, regardless, and you guys take it with what you will with this. Regardless, the Star Wars reveal does does help to set a precedent for the Sith being active in Acolyte. Well, the thing is, they were always active, but they were hiding. Plagueis was helping Palpatine get on the council. They knew them as just ordinary beings, not Sith. So you don't have to destroy a character 
like Yoda to have Sith plot and set up, <clears throat> excuse me, set up themselves for power. You know, that story is already written. It's already there. It's through Darth Tenebris. It's through Darth Plagueis. It's through Sidious. It's, you know, and it's also through Maul Shadowhunter. So we have all those references there that really doesn't destroy these characters. But gives us an insight to how the Sith infiltrated the galaxy to take control. Brilliant writing here. Brilliant writing. And so before we end here, what are we going to do for our book of the week? Last week it was Tenebrous Way. So let's go ahead and go into, since we talked about Dathomirian witches and such, let's go with Courtship of Princess Leia. So that is where we hear first about Dathomirian witches. Later, it was retconned to be in the Ewok movie, I believe. But the the original first mentioned of the Dathomarian witches, the the sisters were was in the courtship of Princess Leia. So, courtship of Princess Leia is book of the week. Let me go ahead and write this down. Ooh, I have Mister Toby right behind me. Let me see if I can. Get Never mind. He already left. He was sitting on my shoulder I'm like a friggin' parrot. Whoopsie. All right. So let's see. Book of the week. Um, courtship of Princess Leia. So I will share that bit of information. If you don't have that in your collection, I'll probably share where you can get it at. <clears throat> but I'll share that bit of information for you guys here on YouTube community page and on the Twitter community page. I'm trying to get myself back active in the community pages for you guys to share some lore there. So courtship of Princess Leia. So there you go. So if you guys have any questions about that book, let me know. But we're getting ready to close out here. Let's go ahead and take this article off the screen. Let's take it off the screen. Courtship of Princess Leia. And thank you so much for sharing the Audible. The audiobook. Hi, Toby. He is right here in front. See, Toby. <laughs> I hope you see his little muzzle right there, his little nose. So he's over here wondering what's going on. What am I doing? How come I'm not feeding them lunch? The normal cat thing. And I think he's going to lay down finally. All right. I thought he was going to get in front of the screen and stuff. Sometimes he does that. Let's see here. There you go. And let's see, yeah, there was a Dathomir witch named um, Sheral in um, Battle of Endor, yes. So that was the retcon, which they were tying things in. Doesn't mean that's where they first began, or where they were first introduced. So they're first introduced in Courtship of Princess Leia. They went ahead and just um, named that witch there as a Dathomirian witch. So there you go. So Courtship of Princess Leia, I highly recommend it. Oh, he's got a toy. He's playing with a toy on the ground. I don't know if you can hear it, but he's really whipping a toy that has a little bell around on the floor. So thank you guys again and stay tuned. I'm, you know, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to talk about game, the games, the development of games. So we could talk about that. Um, we'll see what next week's topic um, is. If you have any recommendations, please share them with me. I'm more than welcome to, you know, take recommendations and build build a calf chat around that. I usually like like do it within the like a few days before so I can get all that information pre prepped up for you and taken care of. And then um, of course, cat, um, cringe factor will be its own thing because that's always decided the night before because I try to stay on top of what is being said during that time frame. So please smash the like button. If you're catching the replay, then let me know you are here. Leave your comments. And as always, if you can become a channel member, thank you so much, Fracture Filter, for the gifted um, memberships that you um, gave out. I highly appreciate you as well as becoming a channel member. And to everyone else, you guys are amazing. Thank you for a wonderful conversation under 
the lore of Visage Ventress. And may the force be with you. And I'll, I shall see you on Twitter. <laughs> if you're on Twitter, I shall see you there. So thank you guys again. Have a good day. Luke Skywalker was just a farm boy until he received a mysterious message from a princess. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. She's beautiful. Star Wars, starring Mark Hamill. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Harrison Ford. Boring conversation anyway. Luke, we're going to have company! I think we took a wrong turn. Carrie Fisher. Good luck. Alec Guinness. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. 20th Century Fox presents the most extraordinary motion picture of all time, Star Wars. Here's where the fun begins. No legendary adventure of the past could be as exciting as this romance of the future. Here they come. May the Force be with you in Star Wars. Happy landing.